Okay, I thought I'd do a quick video explaining the workflow for uh, week five, which unfortunately, because of the, as you're aware, the naming convention for the weeks changed from the first time this was done. And uh, so it, your workflow may say week six workflow, even though the label's week five and this is week five. But the workflow should look something like this one that you see in front of you after you load it up. So I'm just gonna run this initial CSV reader and just as a reminder for, for all of you, as you're aware of now, that you need to identify your particular uh, path and your particular company need learn subset small that text file on your file system to load it up properly. And after it's loaded up, you should see the same data size, the 95,412 uh, training data set. Now the uh, thing should run uh, through the partitioning and normalization just fine. So I'm going to execute the explode categorical to dummies, and which will take just a little time to get through uh, all of the exploding of the variables. And there's more that's being done than is needed uh, for this week, but I just want to keep the workflow consistent with what you've seen before. We're doing the partitioning and we're doing the normalization just like we did uh, last week with the regression models. I noticed one thing with the normalization, we're just normalizing last gift, the log transform of last gift and the log transform of end gift all uh, along with first date and RFA uh, 2F. These other variables are dummies one zero anyway. So that will put every variable on the same scale zero to one. And we do this for the same reasons we put everything in the same scale last week is so that we don't have one variable influencing the clusters this week, uh, the k-means clusters more than others, merely because of the magnitude of the variable. And the reason why the magnitude of the variable matters is because we're using Euclidean distance uh, to build the cluster models. If we used another metric, which sometimes you can uh, use other metrics like the mahal novus distance. If you use the mahal novus distance, you don't have to worry about normalizing the variables. I'm just going to check quickly if we have that available. It doesn't look like it's even available in Weka. So now one thing you'll notice uh, is if you execute this simple k-means, I'm getting a failure uh, with it. And what I I'm, I'm frankly not sure why that's happening this week and it didn't happen uh, last uh, time I taught the course. So, but one thing I did notice was if we bring in the simple k-means for Weka version 3.7, which hopefully you are using Weka 3.7. If you bring in a newer version of Weka and connect it up and use the defaults, let me hook that up again. Whoop. Try one more time. There we go, it should be yellow. Now if I open this up, it's using the same default Euclidean distance. Change the display standard deviations to true if you'd like to see the standard deviations of every variable for every cluster. And it's gonna to default to two clusters. And of course, part of the homework this week is trying different cluster sizes and see what happens to the, uh, to the sum of squared errors as you increase the number of clusters. So I'm just going to run it with that in mind and execute. And now it runs. And what you should see after you build these are all the summary statistics for each of the variables. And this is just two clusters. One last thing you'll notice. Target B is in this model. Target B has been our target variable in the past. And you may wonder, why are we including a target variable for unsupervised learning? Well, uh, oftentimes you won't have something like this for, uh, for building cluster models for unsupervised learning models. But in this case, since we do have it, we can use the clustering algorithm to identify pockets of behavior with target B related to other input variables, kind of in a supervised sense but still we can identify when there's uh, different clusters that have higher than expected target B value equal one or target B value equals zero. With only two clusters, we're not seeing a huge difference. We've got one cluster where it's 7% of the population and another where it's 4%. But as you increase the number of clusters, we increase
increase up to 11, for example, and rerun it, we can look at the view again, and we will see, presumably, different kinds of behavior for target B. And we'll see population 5%, 2%, 10%, and then uh, at most 6% uh, or 7% of the population. As you keep on this one, uh, I'm sorry, this one in particular, this is the 10% of the population for the cluster number two. And again, they count it when the cluster is using C counting or Java counting, you start at zero. So there is this one cluster, cluster two, that has a 10% association with target B equals one, which may be interesting. So other variables in that cluster are more associated with responders. And you'll be addressing that a little bit in the homework. So that's the main thing I wanted to get across, that if you see a failure using k-means, using uh, the 3.6, replace it with 3.7, and everything should work just fine. Uh, so this is just an intro explanation of the workflow, so you can see how it runs and operates. And uh, if need be, I can produce videos explaining more details about what's in this workflow.